Hello, Reggie. How you doing, Debbie? I can't tell you how excited I am to be speaking with you about Candy Cane Lane. Oh, that's so great to hear. I am a diehard Christmas movie fan. And... I love it. You more than fulfilled my wildest expectations with this film. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. This is Go Big or Go Home, light, bright, holly jolly... Everything about Christmas you have packed in here, including a parade marching band, Santa, the 12 days of Christmas coming to life. This is Christmas from beginning to end. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. That was my goal. My motto making this movie was more is more. Well, you sure gave me more and I absolutely love it. One of the, going beyond your cast, which is impeccable, I've got to talk to you about some of the production elements here because they are truly outstanding. Starting with your work with your cinematographer, with Newton Thomas Siegel, you brought in the perfect person mm -hmm. to capture light, bright, lots of movement. Just, I know you worked with him before on Marshall, but just in, he knows comedy. We saw that years ago in Turner and Hooch. He knows how to do spectacle and light and bright, thanks to Bohemian Rhapsody, and still find the heart within the visual tonal bandwidth of the film. And with so much going on, logistically, what were you and Thomas do? What were your thoughts on how to visually bring the grammar? Uh, into play here to make this more means more. Well, you know, Tom and I are, are good friends. Uh, we love working together. And, you know, having made a small movie with him with Marshall, I said, all right, Tom, let's do it again, but we're going to do this X-Men scale. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to pull, pull in all those talents that you have doing those big Hollywood spectacles and, and apply it to a Christmas movie. He totally got what we were doing. And, you know, he's been my right hand for, uh, and he, we just, you know, we worked on storyboards and pre and all that stuff, but we still left room for creativity and improvisation on set. And we just kept trying to top the topper at every turn. Well, you sure as heck did. And it's the lightness and brightness, the polish that this film has that really is the icing on the Christmas cake here. Because you do keep everything light and bright, even when we get into the world, into Pepper's mindset and uh, some of the things that she does. It's still, you never lose that Christmas sensibility. And that's so key here in this story. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, and that was the goal. I mean, you know, for me, uh, you can't appreciate the, the light without a little bit of darkness, without a little bit of edge, a little bit of terror. Uh, I think uh, that's an inherent part of it. Um, so, but at the same time, you don't want to lose the thread. And that's the balancing act making a movie like this, uh, where it's a fun Christmas movie, but we've got jump scares. Mm -hmm. And we've got car chases and we've got kung fu fights. Absolutely. And it's just, at every turn, there's something else that's so visually appealing, but it all stays true to the story which is so important. Now, a really, char a really charming aspect uh, of this you. film, Reggie, is your little porcelain town. Pe Pepper's little Victorian porcelain creations. And it doesn't surprise me that you got Formosa involved in this on the sound. But number one, the VFX on mm -hmm. the little porcelain people, they're actually fine china. The sound is so impeccable. It is actually the sound of fine china if you would be mm. clunking it on a table or something. It's not a heavy porcelain. 
The sound design and mix is impeccable in this film, Reggie. Uh, you know, you, you're exactly right. I was very, uh, when we really talked through what it meant to be made, made out of, uh, you know, be an ornament, right? To be a, a glass ornament. And that sound, like what would they sound like? And, you know, how much of it is enough to evoke it without being too distracting? So we really did a lot of experimentation and we found a, a sweet spot. And thank you for focusing on my mix team because, man, they killed it. They really invested in the movie and they did beautiful, beautiful work. Uh, and it's a challenging film because... Mm -hmm. You know, there's the score and uh, all the sound effects, and uh, there, there's a lot going on in almost every scene, and they always manage to balance it all so your ear knew where to go. Yeah, I mean, just Greg over at Formosa, your supervising sound editor. I mean, for my money, Formosa is always flawless. And you really push them with this film because of so many of the sounds that you've brought up. You know, right down to the foley, and then the mix is so key in this film for authenticity. We have the sounds of geese that are squawking in the skies. We've got mm -hmm. the nine ladies dancing. We've got the sound of the pipers. We've got a marching band. We've got a drum line. Uh, and, you know, every turn. And the foley work is just spot on. Spot on in this dredgie. And that's something that I think I'm so happy that you cared about that in this film. Because there are filmmakers that would kind of overlook that. But you clearly did not. And I thank you for that. Oh, thank you. I appreciate you noticing that level of detail. Uh, most folks can't appreciate the, that kind of production detail. So it really warms my heart that you're plugged in and you actually know who's responsible for this work because yes, we spent a lot of time on it, but I just, I mean, whether the audience uh, knows it or not, it just grounds it all in reality with all this fantastic stuff. When it sounds right, when it feels right, you just, it, it just makes you buy into that reality. And you never sac you never sacrifice dialogue. So we don't miss any dialogue because of all of the other elements that are happening, especially the musicality. Um, and mm. that is so important. So that just thrilled me to no end. But hand in hand with the wonderful Foley and the sound mix and design is the score, which is just absolutely fantastic. It's peppered with all of the Christmas motifs, plus original motifs that are plugged in there. The, in, the orche orchestration and the instrumentation is spectacular. Um, the strings, the string music that Marcus has pulled in is just, it's a, it's a holiday delight. And then you <laughs> punctuate that with the parade marching band stuff. What were you looking for musically in your work with Marcus to really bring this to life and give us this total immersive Christmas experience. Uh, again, I appreciate your fine ear and your fine sense of taste. Marcus and I have been collaborating from the beginning of my career, from House Party, Boomerang, all the way through the process. And this was us finally having the resources to go to the next level. Uh, obviously, he has an amazing career as a musician, producing everybody from Luther Vandross to, uh, to Miles Davis. Uh, but, you know, to have, you know, a huge orchestra, uh, you know, we had choirs in Abbey Road that we had uh, uh, doing singing elements and then uh, infusing that with jazz, in infusing that with hip hop, um, you know, interpolating all the different Christmas motifs so that, you know, you just didn't mix a beat. Music is such an integral part of any Christmas celebration. So again, we wanted to, you know, hit you in the feelings with all that stuff and to add new stuff. Uh, I remember us being on stage and the executives from Amazon going, oh my God, people are gonna write and talk about this score. No one's ever done anything like this. So 
I really you you're the you're the first of hopefully many people who uh, point out the uh, really extraordinary work that they did on this movie. Where did you do? Was the scoring done up at Universal? Okay, we did no, we did it on the on the Sony stage. Oh, okay, you did it across mm -hmm. the street from me. Oh boy, yep. I wish I had been there for that. Well, I <laughs> for my last question, Reggie, I've got to ask you about: Is there anything that you wanted to include in Candy Cane Lane that you did not get to include? Were there any darlings you could not have it just fit in here? Well, it is inevitable in a movie of this scale that you have to kill a couple of your darlings. <laughs> uh, so, you know, if you watch the movie, you know, we've got a little bit of an outtake reel at the end, yep. which only shows a fraction. That was just us clowning around. There, there are a couple of awesome scenes that... Uh, I can't. I mean, I they they were the right things to cut, but there was but the work itself was excellent. I just for the greater good of pacing, uh, things great things had to go. So there's some great great scenes on the floor, and maybe one day in the deluxe DVD edition, uh, you <laughs> will share those with the world. You include those, Reggie. I'll be the first one in line to buy that. Let me tell you. Well, you know. Yeah, I mean, this is the, again, this is the, the the new world we live in. In a streaming world, do those things exist? I, I, I hope so. So do I. Reggie, thank you so much for taking time in this busy day to speak with me about Candy Cane Lane. And thank you for making this film. I want a sequel. Well, thank you. And I will pass the word on. Thank you, Reggie. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Take care. Have a great holiday. You too. Mm -hmm.